we turn our attention to God's holy word, let us begin with prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, almighty and everlasting God, your word of truth has brought to us the water of salvation. For in Jesus Christ, you blessed us. We thank you, O Lord, in your great love that you have brought to us the gift of salvation, forgiveness, life. Lord, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide us as we hear your word so that we too may know how our thirst is quenched. In you, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our lesson before us this morning, I chose to use from uh, the Old Testament on Isaiah in chapter 55. And it begins with the first verse uh, where we read in Jesus' name. Let us rise for the hearing of God's word. And here is how it's written in the New King James Version. It says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? And for wages, for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us through your word. Your word is true. Amen. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that love of God that is showered upon you constantly, that truth of the salvation you have in Jesus Christ that holds your heart in God's love and the peace that just surpasses everything you can ever imagine in the world, may it be with you always, each and every day of your life in Jesus. Amen. You know, here's Isaiah. Isaiah is kind of interesting. I always like reading the Old Testament books of the Bible. They bring up a lot of different ideas for me. When I hear this and I hear Isaiah saying, whoa, come drink, you know, come have water. You know, it's like, whoa, okay. I don't know about you, but that, that's kind of fun for me. But when, when I hear Isaiah, he's inviting me, inviting me, come, come, come. He's inviting me to have, to have water or, or something, you know. And, and then when he, he does that, he, he tells me I'm supposed to come by and eat. And, and, and yet he says, he who has no money. And I was like, okay, there, there isn't any place that you can go that you can get stuff free today. I don't, I don't know about you, but, you know, if you go to the restaurant, guess what's going to happen? They're going to, they're going to come with this little black booklet that has a little receipt inside of it, you know. And they're going to expect you to put a card in there or you're going to have to put some cash. In. You're going to pay for it. I'm, I'm sure you're going to do it. If you go to a grocery store, you know what's going to happen at the grocery store. Don't, well, unless you're on the weekends. You know, on special weekends, they always give out these samples. And I like going there. You get free samples every once in a while. But, you know, but, okay, let's face it. If you're going to get some food, you're going to buy that food. And it's going to take money. There's no question about it. But Isaiah tell us, tells us something here. He says, why do you spend money for what is not bread and wages for what is not satisfied? We know what that is kind of like, don't we? I think we know what that's, that's rather like because it's really common today. Uh, we spend money for all kinds of things that really they don't satisfy anything, do they? In the long run, do they really satisfy us? How many people this weekend, let me tell you, it's, it's kind of a joke in a way, but when you, when you think about it, this weekend, we're going to fly back on Monday. And every pilot that, that we've met coming down here, I ask them, are you going to be able to fly on Monday? Will you be able to see he said, we'll turn on the cabin lights. Yeah, okay. You know, you heard about the eclipse, right? <laughs> okay, so, so here we go. Whoa, whoa. 
But if you're in Missouri, you know, from Missouri, they, they've got this plan. They expect, they expect 100,000 people to be extra in Columbia and an extra 100,000 people in Jefferson City, just 20 miles north of our house. And it's like, whoa. But, but can you eat it? Will the eclipse satisfy your real need? What's so important that an eclipse can draw people from all across our country to, to come to these special cities along the line of the eclipse? Will that satisfy our every need? Will that take away all our worries? Guess what? There's lots of things I haven't seen in my life. And there's going to be a lot of things I won't be able to ever see in my life. And that's just fine. But here in our lesson, I'm reminded of my grandparents and even my parents saying things like, well, if you can't eat it, why buy it? Now, maybe you've heard that before. And after going through the Depression in the 30s, they valued every piece of food they could get. Money was the only thing that could get them out of hunger. And today we throw it away. Oh, that old thing. <laughs> it's out of date. Throw it away. You know, how many times don't people say that? Oh, I'll get the new model. Just throw away the old model. You know, whether it's a phone or it's a computer or it's a chair or if it's a spouse. We think everything's throw away. But God sees things quite differently. He sees a stressed out people. He sees a worried nation. And yet he sees our life through the eyes of compassion. First, because he knows our need and our worries. Secondly, he provides for what we really need. And finally, as much as we have physical needs, he provides yet even more for our spiritual needs. You know, you probably remember the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus going up to the Sea of Galilee and there's a large crowd of people that come and He's teaching them. And, and He uses this word, He commands us in, in a simple statement not to worry, by telling them that they're not to worry about the basic needs of life. Like, he would say, food, drink, or clothing. If you remember in the Sermon on the Mount on chapter 6 of Matthew. But you see, without these things, we're going to die. Without food, drink, clothing, we're going we're to die. Our Lord tells us why we should not worry, though. Because He says we have a powerful Heavenly Father that cares for you and me. And because this is true, we need to shift our basic attitude from worry to faith. In the Gospel lesson that I read this week, it was in Matthew also, and in the Gospel lesson, the disciples were all worried. Because at this, this crowd was huge. And Jesus said, feed them. And it was like, we can't. How are we feeding? 
5,000 men plus women and children. You know? They saw a great big problem. They were worried. Who could feed them with such little? And yet Jesus didn't even seem to notice there was even a problem. Because, you see, our God knows our every need. And He will help us to obtain what we need. Just as He taught, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you much more valuable than they who of you, by worrying, he says, can add a single hour to his life? You know, the miracle, this miracle of feeding 5,000 men plus women and children is always a mind pleaser. People talk about it all the time. But is it because it's a miracle? Or because we learn to trust in our Heavenly Father above every need? You know, knowing that our God is a compassionate, loving God, cares for you and me, all our need in our life should lead us to trust in Him above everything. To know that, that He's with us and that He loves us. And when Isaiah invites everyone who is thirsty, he knew, or I should say God knew, God knows all of us, we thirst. We thirst for all kinds of needs, all special things in our life. But far too often, we don't really know what our needs are. Because we get caught up in the worries of this life. All the things that happen around us. We get excited about uh, an eclipse. And we see that, that God is talking about our basic needs in this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 because, and yet here in Isaiah, he says, we're to, we're to buy water, wine, milk. So he's talking kind of about the same things, the physical needs, right? Things that would sustain our life. And then he also even said bread. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? And yet, is that the needs he's really talking about? Just physical needs to sustain this body? Oops, sorry. This body we have? Or what about what it takes to sustain our soul? What do we really need? Food and clothing? Or is there more to life? You see, earlier in Matthew... Before the feeding of the 5,000, back to the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus explained to the multitude, He said, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given you as well. And He said, Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own, and how true that is. In our life, what is our greatest need? The food we eat, the clothing we wear, the troubles we have to deal with each day in our lives as God's people. You see, God had Isaiah pen. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Is it what we eat with our mouth that's most important? I think not. Rather, we are to eat what is good for our our soul, our heart, our soul, to, to delight in, in abundance. 
God commanded the prophet Ezekiel in the book of Ezekiel. He said, Son of man, feed your belly with this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. And then Ezekiel, then I ate it and it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. So Ezekiel was crying eating the scroll of God's Word. In the Psalms we read, Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became a joy and delight of my heart, my soul. What the prophet was telling the people, and you and me, is to fill our heart, our soul, with the Word of our God. Fill our hearts delight with that truth of the forgiveness of all of our sins. Fill your heart and soul with the new life that God has given you in Jesus Christ, your Savior. Fill your heart and soul with the truth of life everlasting in Jesus Christ, your Savior. So your heart is full. The real bread of life. Because He sustains our soul with real food. The real food we need. The miracle that was seen by the disciples, the people who ate, was not the real food that they, they totally needed. Oh yeah, it, it definitely helped their body physically. But the real food is to eat the bread of life that came down from heaven. And Jesus Himself said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. He says, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to Me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in Me shall never thirst. What can we have that would make us there's no more. Pure spring water? Bottled water? Or what? Isaiah invited everyone who thirsts to come. Come. Buy without money, without price. God was inviting the people to stop worrying about their life they live from day to day and believe in the compassionate, powerful love of God, their Father in Heaven. He knows our every need, every need of body and of soul. And Isaiah was assuring the people that that Messiah to come, that Savior to come, would sustain their whole life. The whole life of God's people for all eternity. And he penned, incline your ear. Come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. That's a promise God made to His people. God made to you. God's everlasting covenant is ours through faith in Jesus Christ. The bread of life. You know, as Jesus fed the 5,000, we see His compassionate love for, for all of our life. Every single day. And when we understand that the real food that is needed is for our soul, which is only by faith in Jesus, we begin to understand just as valuable as, as food is, for our physical body. So also God's Word is to sustain our soul. And our hearts will be light in abundance. And our joy will be complete in Jesus Christ, our Savior. And then the Apostle Paul would say, we are then more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, 
nor any powers, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Savior. Are you still thirsty? With Jesus? May your soul be quenched. May you know the peace that surpasses all understanding. In Christ Jesus, your Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus in the water of our life. In His name, Amen.